Why did Gigi Hadid get arrested? Is James Charles trying to get uncancelled? And what did Blackpink's Jenny Kim say about her low energy performances? Gigi Hadid was arrested and fined $1,000 after customs and border control agents found a leafy green substance in her luggage upon her arrival in the Cayman Islands. She had flown there on private jets for a girls trip on July 10th. When she arrived at Owen Roberts International Airport, she put her bags through a scanner and then the staff decided to search them by hand. It was then that they discovered a relatively small quantity of the substance, which seemed to be an amount that she would have had just for personal consumption. But still, Gigi and her friends were arrested on charges of importation. She was processed at the Royal Cayman Islands Detention Center and was later released pending prosecution of her case. In the end, Gigi was fined $1,000 and she left without a conviction on her record. Her representative then released a statement saying that the green substance was purchased legally in New York City and with a medical license, and that her record remains clear and she enjoyed the rest of her time on the island. But surprisingly, that was not the end of it. Later on, an inside source close to the star made allegations that the Cayman police wanted to be paid off. But apparently Gigi refused and instead opted for the legal ramifications. The police department then hit back at those claims and released a statement saying, our officers categorically deny the bribery related allegation, which has been made against them by Mrs. Hadid. However, we invite Mrs. Hadid to make a formal complaint to our professional standards unit so that they can independently review the case in order to determine if there is any evidence to support her allegation. The inside source also claimed that the substance wasn't in her personal bag, it was found in the bag of one of the people that she was traveling with. But because the plane was in her name, all of the contents became her responsibility. Whatever really happened though, it's clear that Gigi got away relatively consequence free. In fact, just two days after the arrest, she started posting photos from her tropical getaway on social media. So she had obviously moved on from whatever chaos went down at the airport. But she's not the only one that's been making headlines recently. Her ex-husband and the father of her child Zayn Malik just did his first interview in six years on the Call Her Daddy podcast. While he didn't give very many details about their relationship or the breakdown of it, he did say that the reason he was doing the interview in the first place was for their daughter Kai. Aside from that, Zayn also talked about everything that fans have been dying to hear all these years. As we know, he left One Direction eight years ago and he since revealed the reason why. He said, I completely selfishly wanted to be the first person to go and make my own record. If I'm being completely honest with you, I'm a passive dude. But when it comes to my music and business, I'm serious about it and I'm competitive. So I wanted to be the first to go and do my own thing. At the time, One Direction had been working non-stop for five years, creating music and touring almost every day. And Zayn said by the end of it, they were all sick of each other. Though now he does look back on those days that they spent together in a much fonder light than when he left. When it comes to quitting the band, he said that there were a lot of politics going on before he made the decision. He didn't explain it fully, but he did say that certain people were doing certain things. Certain people didn't want to sign contracts. So he got the sense that something was happening and he wanted to get ahead of the curve, meaning that he wanted to be the first person to leave if the other members were already thinking about it. What's really interesting though is the way he describes the aftermath of it all. Zane said that he took the time to not do interviews as he felt overexposed to the press while he was in the band. What he does remember most of all is the rush. The boys were all thrust into stardom overnight after going on X Factor. And it's fair to say that none of them knew how to handle it to begin with. They rose to fame while they were all in their teens and Zayn said that he didn't think that he was intellectually capable of dealing with fame at that time. And now James Charles is trying to get back in everyone's good books. He's finally broken his silence about the aftermath of being cancelled and what that really did to his mental health. He's come a long way since rising to fame in 2016 and becoming the first male spokesperson for CoverGirl. For a few years, it was all very wholesome. Like most YouTubers, he eventually found himself at the center of controversy. But in this case, it was so bad that it ended his career long before it even started. Two years ago, James was accused of talking to underage boys online, and many of them ended up coming forward to claim that he had engaged in inappropriate conversations with them, and it was really bad. He sent them explicit messages and nude photographs on Snapchat. James then posted a YouTube video titled Holding Myself Accountable, but that only served to dig him deeper into the hole, since he admitted that yes, he had in fact sent these messages. This resulted in massive backlash, and he was ultimately cancelled. More than two years later, and James is looking to relaunch himself and his brand. He recently spoke to Cosmopolitan about the scandal. He remained adamant that he was not aware that he was speaking to anyone who was 
underage. He claimed that when he did find out, he'd never been more disgusted in his life and absolutely mortified, admitting that he absolutely did mess up by not confirming their age. He also said that the allegations had a serious effect on his mental health. Quote, I can't even begin to explain to you how bad that week of my life was. I was crying myself to sleep every night. I was sitting there in my bed staring at my phone. At one point, James admitted that he even wanted to take his own life. That's how dark his mind had become. To be fair, the fallout was absolutely insane. He lost multiple business ventures with an estimated loss of income in the millions. Morphe, a makeup company that he famously worked with since 2016, announced on Twitter that they had severed ties with him. He lost countless friends and fellow influencers that wanted nothing to do with him. Even his youngest brother, Ian Jeffrey, cut ties with him over the controversy. Leading the pack was his longtime friend, collaborator, and mentor, Tati Westbrook, who uploaded a viral video called Bye Sister, where she accused James of using his fame to manipulate people's sexuality. She mentioned one incident in particular during her birthday party, where James allegedly tried to flirt with a waiter. When Tati revealed that he was straight and would most likely not be interested in James, he brushed her off and basically said, I can do whatever I want because I'm famous. So there was another level of predation there when it comes to James hitting on straight guys. When this video came out, fans were astounded at his level of entitlement. When talking about the labels that were thrown at him, James now says that he does not believe the interactions should be classified as because he says that is a very popular buzzword right now, especially in politics, but the actual meaning of it has been so misconstrued. At the moment, he's looking to relaunch his career with a new makeup line called Painted. After taking the time to do a lot of thinking, aka plan his comeback, he seems to have now decided that it's a good time to get back into the community. Painted is set to launch in the summer of 2023, but there's no real way of knowing how the internet will respond once it's out in the public domain. There's already been quite a lot of pushback to the idea of his him coming back into the spotlight. Not that there's ever really a good time, but now just seems like a particularly bad time, considering everything that's been going on with Colleen Bollinger. So the situation is pretty similar to the James Charles scandal. One person tweeted, I find it so ironic that James Charles is begging to be uncancelled while he is still supporting Colleen Bollinger, and he's known for also being a groomer. There's no way he has learned from his mistakes. And just in response to the news that his brother had cut him off, fans have taken to Twitter to voice their opinion. One person tweeted, things like this aren't a coincidence. Your siblings grow up with you and witness or experience your behavior. Another person wrote, wow, seems like James Charles got unfollowed in real life too. Just judging from some of these reactions on social media, it doesn't sound like anyone is ready to forgive or forget. In fact, some people are straight up wondering why James is not in prison. So if he is trying to make his way back onto the internet and restore his reputation somehow, it's going to be a massive uphill battle. And there's really no telling if it's going to leave him worse off in the end than he already is right now. All right, so Jenny from Blackpink has finally spoken up about the criticism of her dancing. Unbelievably, she used to be called out by certain fans who said that her performances were lazy and that she was unable to deliver on her choreography. This is something that people said both from Blackpink's tape rehearsals and from some of their live performances. For whatever reason, they chose to single out Jenny and call out her moves, which was something spoken about as a lack of energy and enthusiasm. A few days ago, she went on Dua Lipa's podcast called At Your Service and she talked about all the backlash. Turns out that Jenny had been prone to injury in the early days of Blackpink. She said, I did not know how to control my body the way I should. It all started because I would constantly hurt myself during performances and live shows compared to the other girls. She went on to say, it was a stressful thing in my life. I'm like, there we go. I fell again. I tripped over again. So I feel like I've disappointed my fans at some points in my life where it seemed like I wasn't giving my best. Although she doesn't really owe anyone an explanation, this is the first time that she's acknowledged the criticisms, which were really harsh. I mean, some people even argued that she wasn't happy being in the group or that she was feuding with another member and that's why she wasn't giving it her all. But that obviously wasn't the case. Jenny says that she's been working on her physical health since 2020. In that time, she's learned to take care of her body and she's learned a lot about herself with things like health and her muscles. She also explained how the pressure to dance in high heels had contributed to her discomfort because she thinks it's just something that her feet are not built for. She said, sometimes when I'm feeling perfectly fine, when my body's okay, it's fine. But when I'm traveling and my feet are bloated, if I try to dance in heels, my stamina just goes down. Though she is doing a lot to fix this issue herself. On Blackpink's current world tour, she's opted to wear more comfortable footwear, like boots with ankle supports and with lower Cuban style heels, which is going to distribute her body weight a lot more easily and just make it more comfortable to move around. But even the fact that Jenny is openly talking about this
practice is unusual for the tightly controlled world of K-pop, where idols are expected to maintain high standards of professionalism at all times. And that's where this intense criticism really comes from. Fans were complaining that Jennie's low energy performances were unprofessional, even when she exceeds the standards of most Western artists. The interview once again opened up discussions surrounding toxic practices in the K-pop industry, and some of them have devastating consequences on idols' lives. They're usually picked up by agencies at a very young age, in their early or mid-teens, and from that point on they live a life under tight control. Their days are taken over by grueling singing and dance training. The trainees are also subjected to things like intensive diet plans to try to meet unrealistic beauty standards, and the list goes on and on. Some of them have reported surviving only on water and fainting due to exhaustion. Then when a trainee finally debuts and makes it as an idol, the pressure from their label only increases. As you can imagine, this has a disastrous impact on their mental health. So what do you guys think about this news story? Please let me know in the comments below, and I'll catch you all in the next video.